Hey, what's up, comrades? So we're on the final arc of the original Uncanny X-Men run, which I refer to as the Return of Professor X. Spoiler alert. <laughs> now, he doesn't actually return in this issue, which is issue number 64, but between... Um, this is kind of like a intermediary issue, but it's actually kind of important because it introduces the character Sunfire. Is that his name? <laughs> I don't remember. No... It is. It's Sunfire. So Sunfire is a Japanese uh, mutant whose mom got caught up in the Hiroshima blast, and then um, she died shortly after his birth, and he had the power to excrete from his hands, like, the power of nuclear blasts, or the sun, or something. Like, he has, like, a fusion attack power. Um, that's pretty cool. And he can also fly, and he wears this sweet costume that's, like, kind of like a red Chinese dragon. <laughs> Which makes less sense, but... <laughs> I think it's supposed to be like the rising sun, but it, it looks like a Chinese dragon. <laughs> it could just be some old-fashioned racism, too. But <laughs> Anyway, there's not much going on in this, uh, in this issue, to be completely honest. Um, some of the boys, uh, Bobby, Hank, and Warren, are out in the city, just kind of like looking around, and the mini Cerebro is like, hey, there's a mutant around here, and they, and, um, and they find Sunfire, who blows up a monument to like peace that his dad's introducing, as like a sim symbolism of like Japanese American cooperation, and then he's about to do some more damage, but then Iceman Warren and Hank like fight him pretty good. But then Hank gets like sunburned real bad <laughs> from Sunfire's power uh, after they are wrestling around, and he doesn't take a direct blow. I think it's just like being in the area with all the heat, like kind of gives him like second degree burns or something. He looks pink. And so then the rest of the team, they meet, they meet back up with Cyclops and Jean, and then the four of them, leaving Beast behind, travel to uh, D.C. following after the Yoshidas. Um, I'm trying to remember his first name, is, but he's a, he's a Yoshi, Yoshida guy. So his dad's a diplomat, and then his uncle is kind of like a nutcase. And so once um, his uncle was there when his powers first manifested a couple, few years ago, and he kind of got him to pledge to be evil, essentially, to destroy, like, the Western menace, <laughs> if you will. And so there, there, there's some back and forth between uh, the the different Yoshida men arguing about, like, what Sunfire should do, and the dad being disappointed that he's not, like, pushing for peace, and that he's caught up with his uncle and, like, living in the past and all this stuff. And it seems like the uncle is the brother-in-law of his dad. Like, it's the mom's brother, which is why it's partially kind of crazy. So... Once they're in D.C., um, Sunfire's about to go blow up the Capitol, but then his dad catches him and demands he stops, and then he hits his dad and runs off. And right before he's about to explode the Capitol with his fire powers, um, Warren shows up, and they, they fight a little bit, and then he gets taken out because he's about to take a full blunt, the full blunt of the fire blast. But Iceman freezes him up so he doesn't, and then... Uh, Sunfire notices Iceman, so he goes to fight him, and he kind of they go back and forth a little bit, but Sunfire overrides him. Meanwhile, uh, Jean helps um, Warren land safely, and then pushes Cyclops up on top of the Capitol. So um, once Iceman's taken care of, Sunfire goes to blow up the Capitol, like the White House, or I don't know, just says the Capitol, and um, Cyclops start fighting him. So they, he's like the optic beams versus the fire blast are going, and then. Uh, Sunfire keeps getting closer and closer, and finally Cyclops, like, jumps to, like, wrestle him down, but then he gets, like, dropped, um, and Gene has to rescue him, uh, and then Sunfire's like, all right, now that everyone's out of the way, it's time, so he goes to blow up the Capitol again, and then his dad's back, and he's standing there, he's like, you can blow up the Capitol if you want, but if you do, you're gonna kill me, too, and, and then Sunfire's like, no, who how will I choose, my father or my uncle, both men who have raised me, something, something, and then the uncle's like, I'll make that decision for you, and he takes a gun and shoots <laughs> the dad, who then falls off the top of the capital like the dome to his death and then sunfire like blasts the uncle and is like curse you uncle and then he flies down and his his father's like promise me you'll live for the future and not be stuck in the past and he's like crying and then the police show up and they're like hey um we're gonna give you a minute <laughs> before they arrest you. and then the x-men who are skulking in the woods are like oh if only we'd reached him sooner we could have saved him and then we, we have to try harder in the future and at uh, the end of that issue and so, thus returns Professor X in issue uh, 65. So, what happens is the X-Men return home from their battle 
um, their previous battles. And they're all tuckered out in Satopotamus. And we see Alex in his Havoc uniform and Lorna Dane in her Polaris uniform. And they're like, hey, you guys need to get dressed and come to the command room right now or else. And then there's some bickering back and forth. Lorna's got some of her magnetic powers back. And then Havoc takes like some real charge here. And then the X-Men kind of like poutedly go and like change. And then they meet up. At this point, Havoc um, shows them that there's this alien force and it's these creatures that um, they evolved to be like completely uncaring. And then, but the technology to like move their planet around. And so what they do is they take their planet to like other planets and like destroy everything <laughs> and then capture slaves. It's not fully thought out. <laughs> <laughs> all this stuff would work there's like some basic understanding of gravitational pull and stuff in this issue but a lot of it's just like all right well it's a, like world ending threat or whatever we also find out that they they sent like um a forward team that's in they said antarctica but then later on in the issue they're fighting in like death valley i guess it was it was kind of odd um but it, it's one of those things where it's like they're like wrapping this up <laughs> You can tell they're just like, we need to come up with some sort of ending, and then we're going to like call it and just do reprints for like 10 years or something. Um, it's a long time. Anyway, so at this juncture, Jean Grey starts crying, and it's like, oh, I'm so happy I don't have to live this lie anymore. And Cyclops is like, Nani Dusko? <laughs> <laughs> and Professor X comes out, because he's alive! Oh my goodness! We find out he was hiding in like the sub-sub-sub-basement of the <laughs> X-Mansion, so he could prepare for this invasion, because at some point he... Um, he had noticed that they were coming and he'd realized all this stuff and he recalls like a lot of this, uh, the background with these aliens. And then he says he was trying to figure out what to do when Changeling showed up. Changeling, remember, is one of them. Um, he's like an old, an old enemy. Um, and that he was like, hey, I just got word from the doctor that I only got six months to live. So, you know, I'm, I want to make up for all the bad things I've done. So I want to help. And Charles Xavier's like, can you pretend to be me for like <laughs> a while? And he's like, show sure can. <laughs> And then uh, Charles gave him some of his, like, psychic powers, I guess. He split them <laughs> while he went and did, like, preparations. So, anyway, so the X-Men, uh, Charles, like, gets rid of all the fatigue for the X-Men, and then they train, like, super-duper-duper duper hard. Meanwhile, S.H.I.E.L.D. has discovered uh, this alien invasion is happening, and they start attacking the base. And then Charles is like, ruh row, that's going to alert, like, everybody that something is amiss, and they're going to hurry up their plans to come destroy the Earth. And then we get some, like, news broadcasts about, like, earthquakes in Japan and an island sinking under the sea and people are like, oh, this planet's coming and it's going to destroy us all. Oh, no. So Professor X shoves the X-Men inside this, like, uh, special fighter jet rocket thing that he made and sends it right into, crash into the enemy's base. And he's like, I should need you to, like, delay for a little bit. And they're like, cool, we'll do that. So they go in there and they start fighting some big monster thing. And then the aliens are like, oh, ha, ha, this land is so full of stock and slaves and good stuff. We're so excited to take it over. They're kind of like fish-looking monsters. Um... And so the X-Men are, like, fighting a losing battle when uh, Professor Xavier unifies all the compassionate people's mental energies in the whole Earth. <laughs> and then, all right, let me explain this right. <laughs> so he does that, but he doesn't do it. it, it it's kind of, it's like, the writing got, like, real poor in this issue. He's like, I have to do this to save the whole world, but I can't interrupt surgeons or pilots. It's like, well, if the whole world's going to get destroyed, <laughs> maybe you should interrupt surgeons and pilots whatever so he gathers all this compassion and energy from all the corners of the, the planet and unifies it into one force and then lorna uses her magnetic powers to transfer it to gene somehow or to to for, force it all on and this and and this is where at the beginning they're like oh this these people crash landed in antarctica and then it's like send it all to death valley and i'm like that is not in antarctica <laughs> whatever nothing matters so then gene picks up on it from Lorna Dane, and then she funnels it into Havoc, who then funnels it into Cyclops, who then shoots it into the planet in the sky, while Beast and Angel are, like, um, fending off guys, and then Iceman keeps Cyclops cool so he doesn't overheat. <laughs> I can see Pete. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. <laughs> anyway, the aliens get hit with so much compassion and love from the people on the Earth, and it shows, like, people in, like, Africa and Asia and, you know, Ohio and all this bullshit and they're all like yeah looking up in the sky being like they and it's just like very dramatic and very dumb and then the aliens are like oh no I feel like not fighting anymore that would ruin our whole society <laughs> we better run away <laughs> and so then they abandon forever I guess I, never, I don't remember ever hearing about these guys again it's like the end Zox or something and then um, Professor X is like, uh, Press, yeah, Professor X is like I did it help me Lorda and then he like passes out and Lorda's like no Professor X and then back at the 
we see the X-Men fleeing the ship somehow with their crashed rocket, I guess. And the, the ship's like exploding and they're like, well, I guess those aliens got some of that compassion and they decided what they've been doing was wrong. So they killed themselves. <laughs> One more issue to go. <laughs> and so here we go, the last issue of Uncanny X-Men ever. <laughs> Just kidding. It is the end of the original run. Um, and it stars the Hulk, which is awesome. I love the Hulk. I re honest, honest to God, I do. He's pretty fantastic. Now, Mark Ruflo's interpretation of the Hulk is less great. <laughs> um, he's the weakest of the original, of, of like the four main characters um, from the Avengers. The other three being Thor, uh, Captain America, and Iron Man. Iron Man is the best, then Captain America, then Thor, who Thor is great until he's not. And then the Hulk, which is, he's just okay the whole time. The problem is Bruce Banner, is, it, and you're not really sold on Bruce Banner. I felt like, um, oh, who is, um, I actually thought, um, what's his name? The guy, the Ang Lee's version, the original Hulk, I thought, that was a better Bruce Banner. He was too handsome, but I thought he, he did it better. But, um, fuck the guy from fight club, uh, Edward Norton, Edward Norton's Bruce Banner. <sighs> I wish I could have brought Edward Norton forward to do the Avengers. He was so good. His, cause the Hulk doesn't matter. The Hulk is all CG and fighting and I hate better. Ooh, don't say his name. I words, words used to trick Hulk. <laughs> like who gives a fuck? <laughs> And Disney, they tried to make it look too much like Bruce Banner when he turns in the hall, or t like Mark Ruffalo. And then again, Mark Ruffalo is just not, he's not a very good Bruce Banner. Like Bruce Banner is not this like cowardly nerd. Um, and it's just like, it's an embarrassment. But here we get to see good old Bruce Banner in all his glory for like five seconds. <laughs> so the X-Men are trying to figure out how to help Professor X. Um, and meanwhile, Bobby and Alex are fighting over Lorna. And Lorna's like, this isn't a, what did she call it? Like, <laughs> this isn't a sock hop or something. It's just like a very old term for like a, a girl's, like a dance. I don't know. We used that term in high school, I think. But it was like the girl's dance. It was like the, where the girls asked the guys to dance. I never went because I was clearly not cool enough. But <laughs> I think that's what we call it, a sock hop. Anyway, that's not important. But the only reason it's important is because the B team, which is Lorna and Alex, stay home for the Hulk adventure. And then Iceman stays home because he doesn't trust Alex not to steal Lorna away. And it's like, bro, she's already been stolen away. <laughs> like, move the fuck on. You clearly are not homosexual, man. <laughs> anyway, so the Beast, uh, Angel, Cyclops, and Jean Grey head... Uh, oh, so they, they use a device. And they mention that same device that Hank Pym used or in another issue of, like, the Avengers somewhere, to get into uh, Professor X's brain to see how they can help him. And it immediately, like, kind of breaks. And it's like, the Hulk, the Hulk! And then Jean's like, and then Cyclops is like, Jean, use your telepathic power, see what you can do. And she goes in, and she also gets the same thing. The Hulk, the Hulk! And like, I guess we just got to find the Hulk and figure out what the heck's going on. So they track the Hulk down to where he's usually at, like, the Southwest somewhere. Um, it's like his, his stomping grounds in, like, a lot of the comics. Um, he ends up in Canada a little bit when he fights Wolverine, which we'll get to eventually. So he, um, they get down to the Hulk, Hulk's like, no words, blah, 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 and they start fighting, he beats them all up pretty good, but then Jean uses her telepathic powers, which is obviously his, like, only weakness, and, uh, she kind of shouts him down telepathically to make him banner again, and they're like, Bruce, we need your help, Professor X, a friend of yours, he said we have to come to you to get help, and Bruce is like, I, I don't know who the fuck Charles Xavier is, and then, dun, 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 Ross Thunderbolt shows up, what an asshole, with, like, a tank and the army, and next men are like, hey, man, you can have him, just like, give us, like, five minutes so we can figure this out, and they're like, no, fuck you, <laughs> he's our prisoner, <laughs> like, Thunderbolt Ross, being, being a king asshole, as usual, uh, anyway, so, finally, Bruce, like, it's like, oh, yeah, Charles Xavier, we worked together to make this anti-fatigue thing using gamma rays, like, sure, why not? And it's in my it's in one of my secret labs nearby, and then Thunderbolt Ross yells some more, and then Hulk gets angry, takes over, and starts fighting. And so X Men are like, we gotta we gotta bounce because they were gonna arrest us too. So they bounce, and then they randomly, literally randomly, like in, they're flying away in like their 
stolen Kazakh spaceship thingy. And um, then they see the Hulk. And Angel's like, good job, Cyclops. I don't know you could track him so well. And Cyclops is like, I just chose a random direction. <laughs> and it's like, good old Boy Scout Cyclops. <laughs> Can't just take a win. <laughs> That's why Jean loves him. He's so honest. But also why she loves Wolverine. Because he's such a bad boy. Check out Home Map <laughs> on YouTube. Literally, Home Map. He explains a lot of the reasoning for Jean Grey doing what she does. Um, when people who have common sense write her. Anyway, so... They, they come down to fight the Hulk again, and they um, end up blasting him into a wall, which opens up, just so happens to be where the secret lab is. Who's up? And so then the rest of the X-Men distract him while Angel flies in, gets the device, and they all, like, peace the fuck out. And then um, Hulk just, like, shakes his fist at him. And they're like, wow, that was really lucky. We just, he just happened to be at this lab, and yada, yada. Which I was thinking the same thing, and I was like, man, this is such good rating. <laughs> it's like, obviously, like, that, that was lucky. And then Cyclops has his like thesis where he's like, well, maybe Bruce Banner has a little more control than we thought, and he was he was leading the Hulk on. And it's like, yeah, I choose to believe that's accurate. So they get back to good old Charles, and they use a device, and he's cured, hooray, and everyone's like, hooray, hooray. And then we get the outro, which is like, and thus they continue to fight for mutant rights happily ever after, the end. Because it's the end. And there's even a little a little portion at, at the very end where all like the, the answer to the letters in the back of old comic books, where Stanley is like, that's the end of the X-Men. Hopefully they'll come back someday. You know, the, the team did a really good job this last round, but we're going to try out a few other things and just see where that goes. So that's it. That's the end of the Uncanny X-Men forever for their first run. So <laughs> what are we going to do next? Okay, so um, there's some things that happen between now and when the X-Men are revitalized. I'm not going to go through the reprints. Reprints are just fucking the reprints. It's like issue 67 through like 99 or something. It's a lot. What we are going to do is we're going to go through some... Um, we're going to hit up like the different villains mostly who play cameo roles cameo roles in like avenger comics um fantastic four is a lot of namor so there's some spider-man stuff x-men kind of pop up a little bit here and there i'm going to kind of like read through all those and just get like the highlights i'm not going to like do what i did now and do like a separate uh video of each and then kind of mash them all together i'm just going to kind of power through them all over the next week or so because there's a lot that i track down um and just kind of give the highlights uh, and then have, like, I do with these, where I just have all the covers, so you can check it out if you really want. Then we're going to do, somewhere in the middle of there, we're going to do Beast. Or maybe I'll, I'll wait till afterwards. Um, we'll see. I think there's only one cameo appearance of, like, Beast after he's, like, the Beast. Uh, before he's, like, joins the Avengers and stuff. But I'm, I'm going to go through what I got and kind of decide from there. And then we got the Wolverine gets introduced in the Hulk. And then we're, then we're going to hit the Return of the X-Men. Second Genesis uh, pretty hard with, um, I think it's the first annual... Or Uncanny X-Men Giant Size, number one, I think is where they all get introduced. And uh, we'll just pick up with the arcs and continue going forward. Cool. Catch you all later.